Well, it's another day and came in the shop to get some pieces done. I'm going to show you guys what I got. So this guy right here went ahead and cleaned it all up. Went ahead and sanded the whole inside and popped some holes in it. Now the reason these holes are popped in here is these are going to act as spot welds. Now you see that piece right there that goes across the face. I just measured down from here to the center and then from this flat spot to the center then I struck a uh, a line with a magic marker for those two points and there you go that is that's where the spot welds for that are gonna go now I was saying that I still needed to make the interior pieces and I did Let's go ahead and pump the brakes on this real quick, guys, before we get any further along in this build. I want to share a couple of tips with you guys that would have saved me some time if somebody would have told me. I've had a couple of people ask me questions about this already, so it obviously does need to be covered, and hopefully it saves some time on your guys' builds if you guys are doing some sheet metal work. Here we go. All right, guys. I wanted to go ahead and talk about this for a second. I, I had a couple of people ask questions about it, so I'm just going to cover it. What I basically did was I cut the piece as close as I could get it, right? Because I traced it out and all that and then cut it. So if I fit this up in here like this, what I did was I basically started on one of these lines and then I picked what other areas didn't match up. Now, see, I got a little happy with the grinder here. There's like a 16th inch gap, but that's fine. The welder's gonna take care of that. It'll fill it right in and it'll be, it'll be nice and strong. So basically I picked an edge and then started working my way over. You just keep grinding away until it fits. Just test fit it, see what gaps are tight and what are loose. The tight ones obviously need to be ground down a little bit so it fits. Now, these 90s that line up right here, these were the hardest ones to uh, get right. So I started concentrating on these other edges and then I saved these 90s for last. So I had my basic radius that I wanted to put in the piece, but this was, whenever I started, I'm not even going to lie, this was like a quarter inch too long. So here's what I did. Now, there's no special tools or anything like that that I used. Literally just used a hammer. A piece of angle iron. Um, I did have uh, uh, my body hammer over here. That is about the only specialized piece of equipment I used. And I used this back uh, wedge edge on both of these actually a couple times. So here's what I did. If you're looking down at the piece like so, right? And let's picture that this is sticking out further. So all you do is you just choke up on the piece a little bit and then you you beat that down and around the corner, right? And each time it pulls it up more and more and more. So remember, definitive edge right here, we got it test fitted in so the top all fit. All of these edges fit perfectly. It was this 90 and this 90 right here that I had to massage. I had to massage both of them. So this one here, same thing, except I used the end. You know, you got to have something, see like that. So all I did was just scoot it out a little bit like that. See that, that gap right here. Let's zoom in for you guys. Okay. So if this was sticking out further than it currently is, right? I just scoot it out a little bit like that and then beat it down beat it down and around the corner so and i had to do this a handful of times every time i'd come back i'd scoot it and beat it scoot it beat it and now we have a piece that fits perfectly here they are so these are made out of the 20 gauge sheet metal this is made out of 16 so these all fit together in here. They're not 100% perfect, but they will be uh, held down and welded. As you can see, like there's a small gap on this side here, but what I'm gonna do is it's not really a big deal. It's kind of tight right here. I might sand that off a little bit more, but all these pieces will fit in 
here like so. Now, if you're wondering what the holes are for, it's the same as this side here. It's gonna be a series of spot welds in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my vice grips, I'm gonna clamp it down, hold it down, whatever I gotta do. We'll start with the bottom piece, then I'll put the other sides in, do the spot welds on that, and then I'll probably weld that whole corner in to tie it all together. Now, not only is it gonna hold these two pieces together, but it should burn through and melt into the 16 gauge as well, tying it all together and making it an extremely strong part. But for now, what I did was I went ahead and hit it with uh, the sander, my palm sander down there. Went ahead and hit all these, a little bit of the belt sander on the inside of the 16 gauge piece because I couldn't get down in there. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit it. We're gonna hang these pieces up and hit it with some cold galvanizing compound. Now what this also doubles as is a uh, what they call a weld through primer. Um, you can buy the specialty stuff, but in the end it's uh, just galvanizing compound, you know, cold galvanizing. So right now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is hang these up. I'm gonna wipe them down, try to get everything off of them, any oils or anything like that. And I'm gonna hit them with some primer and let them dry. Then next time we come to the shop, we will be welding them in because all that's got to dry. Because if you, if you have obviously unprotected surfaces inside, it's going to rust right away, right? So you have to protect it no matter what. We're going to use a little bit of this stuff. Anybody knows what this is? You know it can fix almost anything. This and a little duct tape, baling wire, and duct tape. Remember that. That'll fix anything. So this is what we're going to use to go ahead and hang our parts with. This is the only table I have. I really need to get a workbench. This is getting ridiculous at this point. Got one sitting in my yard, but I don't have a truck to get it here right now. So that's fun. Yep, so we're gonna let that dry and then we'll come back and weld it together. And we are back. It is the following day. These parts are dry on here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start putting them together. We'll see how it goes. So I started welding in that frame section and I came to realize that I'm getting awfully close to the floorboard and if I catch that carpet inside on fire, I'm going to have a big problem. I think we need to pull the interior out of this car before we finish out welding that or, <laughs> or we're just going to have a big problem. I'm trying not to get too much heat into the piece, obviously for warpage reasons and all that. That's why we're doing hot tack welds.
right, so I finally got all this welded in and ground down. So next, what I want to do is I'm going to bang bang this down with a hammer and weld that in. This was a ton of work, a ton of work. Um, part of it was my fault because I put such thick welds on it all the way around, but I wanted really good heat penetration because you want to tie it together front to back. This is a frame piece, you know, you want it to be strong. So ground all this down, that took about half hour to an hour to grind this whole thing down. So now I'm gonna go ahead and beat this down and weld it in. blended in real nice there may be a couple other little pinholes that I, I try to tack up and clean up sand it prime it and then paint it well we'll just prime it and then hit it with the underbody coating that'll be uh, sufficient I believe uh, but yeah got this all closed up under here um, blended in a, uh, a weld from here to here on these two surfaces 